Here we are in the top cut, advancing even further, and now we're here with just the heavy hitters left. They've qualified. They've even won past the top cut. We're even further in here in the semifinals. Even further beyond, one may say, and we're pushing past our limits to reach the semifinals. We have some of the best competitors that have come out here today, and that is no easy feat as we've seen some incredible battles and some incredible trainers here today. Some of the battles that we've seen today have probably been some of the closest Pokemon battles I've ever yeah. seen, if not literally as close as possible. I think one battle literally came down to a single range um, of a move. <laughs> so realistically, anybody can take this title away today. And one of the competitors already making their way is one tournament win here today from most likely receiving their world's invitation. That's yeah. going to be uh, Diego, who we just saw in their last game. If he wins today, he'll end up taking it. Yeah, he is in the other semifinals. He's mm -hmm. going to be going to the Grands, but the matchup we have right in front of us here is going to be Louis strike and versus Rishi Gupta. Sorry, the little small handwriting, but I like it nonetheless. And you want to know what I like even more than the handwriting? I like the teams here. We have very typical team. We've seen Lewis here before. We've seen them. I actually don't think we've seen Rishi yet, but we've seen Lewis here before. He's running the Calyrex Ice team with the Pelipper, Amoongus, and Didi, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and the Golden Go. And then we also have an interesting team on the side of Rishi Guptra, which is running the Koridon, the Gothitelle, the Rillaboom, the Fluttermane, Tinglu, and Heat Rotom, which is a bit of a throwback here. And it's not a helping hand grata, more of a main attacker run, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of versatility here running U-turn for a little bit more movement capabilities there. Absolutely, and with that Karaidon being so potent with all of its attacks and with that sun setup, it's going to allow the Rotom to threaten that the uh, Ice Rider that we're going to see on the other team. I wouldn't be surprised if just with the sunlight alone, it would be able to threaten an instant KO in the first turn. If I'm not mistaken here, the Redirector... Uh, on the side of Lewis is going to be the Amoongus. It also has the Ndidi. So if it wanted to switch out the uh, Amoongus, but you're losing sleep at that point. And if you're not going to really commit to the uh, the whole psychic terrain thing with the Ndidi, you'd really want to have that sleep. But with that pressure coming out from the Rotom Heat, which I would expect, honestly, to see in every game, um, I don't really see any reason not to bring it for game one to potential game three. Uh, but it would be able to pressure the Amoongus pretty significantly and, of course, threaten that Calyrex. Yeah, that is a decent team. Yeah, the Coridon has so much going for it, so much flexibility. But we've seen the Calyrex Ice Rider team before. It runs like a well-oiled machine mm -hmm. once you get it going. But it's like starting up a difficult lawnmower sometimes. <laughs> when it's not going your way, you just kind of keep on trying to rev that engine. And until that engine gets revving, it is... It is tough to get it going, right? It's not going to work out points. too well. But the Coridon has so much flexibility, especially with that U-turn. Mm -hmm. it, if it's not in a favorable matchup for itself, it can just set oh, up the yeah. sun, leave, come back, and it set that up once again. The main threat it has to watch out for, though, is this Pelipper. That Pelipper going to be sending down the range, mm -hmm. shutting off oh, all the true. protosynthesis, all the different abilities that could come through for that team has to watch out for this Pelipper. That's another thing to consider as well. With that sunlight we are going to be seeing the flutter main on the side of rishi i think that is the only protosynthesis mon here that is yeah that is the case so it would be benefiting it would be getting that speed boost which it would definitely appreciate since it's holding a focus sash i think we might even be seeing this uh seeing this flutter main leading if it is going to be holding focus sash i would imagine it might be a leader in that case to just try to get some spread damage to reduce the um hp of some of those more potent threats maybe even threaten some knockouts on some of those leads like it is running icy wind so it could even significantly threaten something like amoongus or even any of the dragon types that we see like raging bolt or the mariadons karaidons stuff like that so with all of the things that we have on this team for rishi including something that you were telling me about a little bit ago. I wasn't too familiar with the strategy, but my, mind enlightening the folks at home about what we might see with some of the Pokemon here. Yeah, it is the classic that had dominated the meta for quite some times, a few regulations back. It is the Tinglu Stomping Tantrum Fissure. So for everybody who doesn't get the analogy here, Fissure is a one-hit KO move like Share Cold, but because it's a ground type, it also gets access to Stomping Tantrum, which moves power is doubled when you miss a move so mm -hmm. go for the fissure 
doesn't get the one hit KO. You're fine. You have a 130, 160 base power move coming at you the next turn after that. So it's a very mm. consistent, very good. And Ting Lu is just so tanky to boot as well. And it has even more moves along the um, along the way. It has heavy slam for that steel type coverage. It has throat chop to shut down some of those vocal player moves. So it is an amazingly strong Pokemon. I'd love to see it on this team. A couple other things it's got going for it. It is going to be running the Assault Vest on top of its ability, which reduces the special attack of all Pokemon on the field, which, you know, Coridon's not going to worry about as a physical attacker. And some of the other Pokemon here, they're not primarily meant to do damage, more so to mitigate it and set up success for the other Pokemon on the team. So a lot of things this thing we can get away with, reducing the special attack with the Assault Vest, going to be re reducing it even more. It's naturally very high in both defensive stats, high HP as well. It's a very pertinent Pokemon, very persistent, and it's going to be a hard time taking down. This is very reminiscent of that Articuno strategy we exactly. saw a little bit while ago. But because of its tankiness, you'd think usually you trade that off with not as good attack, but that one shot is so strong. Leading out with the Gothitelle Rotom, getting that Shadow Tag in there, not letting that Calyrex switch out of this unfair matchup here. We just have to see what this Rodom can do. Can it take down this Ice Rider before it gets the setup with the Trick Room? So the thing with this Rotom, it has Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Protect and Overheat. It actually isn't running a Heat Wave, so it's not going to be able to threaten through the Follow Me. But Gothit's Hell, if it is, it is running Taunt, so it could really expose this Calyrex, um, but the tr it still would be getting that Trick Room guaranteed for the next turn. It being a fire type though, won't be too worried about the Glacial Lands. Oh, oh, switching out the Rotom, a very interesting play. Getting a little bit of the read out, taking out the Psychic Terrain, and now threatening the Fake Out next turn is an amazing play from Rishi. Really smart. It's threatening out the Fake Out because Rillaboom's equipping it. It's also threatening it because... The Trick Room the is trick down! Room. Exactly. Trick fake Out's going to be able to stop out the Calyrex from getting the Trick Room off. Wow. With the... Grassy terrain replacing the psychic terrain. That's gonna allow the fake out to actually connect. And right now, you know, your uh, he has to protect. He has to stall another no turn. No choice but stall another turn with his Calyrex. That's an incredible play. Amazing play, and now Rishi has everything in his hand here. Do whatever he wants. He could go set up, he could go for another swap out. Things are looking so good. Rishi has bought himself a free turn here. And this is, uh, I guess, the crack in the armor, which is a seemingly unbeatable strategy with the Calyrex plus a Redirector. Um, of course, every strategy in Pokemon is beatable. There's nothing that's completely immune to everything, but I think this is probably one of the more consistent and favorable options wow. as well. A crit, no as less. Well. The follow me comes through, but not fast enough to beat Rishi's speed right now. And without the Trick Room, things are looking bad. And now, this Open. support mon is dead weight on the field. There's going to be a swap out here somewhere. It's running Dazzling Gleam, but you don't really care about it. It's that. not effective against anything but this Coridon. And even then, it's not going to be doing lethal damage. Far from it. Uh, now, the only real thing you want to try to accomplish if you're Rishi is maybe try to see if you can cheat out a switch to get a more threatening Pokemon out on the field to maybe potentially risk the one shot onto that Calyrex. But honestly, both of these Pokemon I feel are pretty capable of doing it themselves. Yeah, very capable but not capable for the one shot. I think he wants to go for a decisive blow. Go for the taunt, gets blocked out. Fair enough. They, he wants to negate any potential trick room here. Wow, that U-turn does a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And now going back to Rishi, let's see what his potentially final Pokemon could be. Might Unless be he goes back to the Rotom. Might be seeing the Rotom come back because of that overheat. With this exposed Calyrex, now with Protect down, it's guaranteed to take it. Dazzling goes out, does not do very much at all to anybody on the field right now. I guess the only real hang-up you might have with Overheat is I don't believe it's a 100% accurate move. It's a very high power move, but there always is that risk of missing it. Of course, exactly. now, um, realistically though, you want to go for the Trick Room with your Calyrex, but I think he's actually going for high horsepower here. Um, just a little bit more... But the Follow Me is threatening that high horsepower from the Gothitelle. That is true. That is very true. Do you go true. for the Glacial Lance? This is a solid 120 on both. Mm. 
which is what he's gonna go do right now. Let's see what Rishi has in store though, offensively. Gonna go for the terrestrialization. On who though, which one is it gonna be? It's gonna Goth be on the Gothitelle, Terra Dark. That Dark, I believe, does is immune to priority moves. So it would prevent something like Fake Out or uh, anything else like that. But I guess this is just for the damage onto the Calyrex. Wow! With the Dark typing is going to do a lot of damage. With the follow-up Thunderbolt from the Rotom as well, that's going to be huge. Yeah, it's going to be immune to the uh, any status uh, priority moves, but doesn't even need it. It just wanted that damage. Rotom and Gothitelle both going to be very healthy after that. And just like that, not even using a restricted Pokemon, you've gotten rid of Calyrex. Yeah, Calyrex, the restricted Juggernaut, has been taken out now. What do you have left? You have two Supportmon and a Pelipper. Sure, this Pelipper can do some good work here. But it's being threatened by the Rotom as well. And it doesn't have a water move to take out the Rotom. This is looking like the Kingslayer team here, this Coridon team. Yes. Not even using the Coridon. And it does have Weather Ball though, yeah. which can threaten the Rotom. But the Gothitelle, it does have. Follow me. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's running a foul play taunt fake up attack. Oh, you're right. So that Rotom is vulnerable, but guess what? We got Rilly Boom in the back. Just switch out. You, your Rotom has no but boost or whatever. Rilla Boom but is weak to Hurricane. It as would well. be weak to Hurricane, but then at that point. You have the fake out pressure. Exactly. So amazing plays from both teams. They're seeing the Gothitelle switch out on the side of Rishi. He's been dialed in so far. It looks like Lewis. Getting the sun back. So it's no. It's going to be a fire type. What a read! Ball. And into the Rotom. Wow. Coridon is absolutely one of the best. Pokemon teams you could really see in this format. In Such incredible usage. There's so much dynamic pressure this team has. There's so much you can do. There's a Dazzling Gleam. That's oh, going to sting a little yeah. bit. Do half. That's going to hurt. But now with the sun up, this Rotom, after it just gets through this Pelipper, it's going to have so much it can do here. Taunt is down on Ndidi. Trick Room is able to be supplied, but do you even want that with how fast your Pelipper is? Ooh. With uh, you still have the terrestrialization as a result Whoa. as well, but uh, it, it, there I don't know what exactly what kind of play you would want to go for here. You could switch out once again, but if you do, you're risking some turns where you could be getting in some really solid damage. And Lewis still has one Pokemon on the field, which yeah, he's gonna bring back out. It's gonna be the Amoongus coming into play in the sunlight, and against at least one fire type move, it's a little bit scary, but the Terrasalization is gonna come out as well. And uh, yeah, it's gonna go on to the Indeedee, just to shape things out a little bit more. Fairy typing is gonna help it resist some of these. Uh, Oncoming attacks. Exactly. The fact that this Gothitelle did not get a swing in is going to bite. But now the U turn, keeping this Coridon as the insurance against the Pelipper is absolutely ingenious on the side of Rishi, giving him so many more options here. And able to play a little more aggressively as well going forward. There's the overheat. There it is. Going in on the Ndidi. And with the sun, it takes down Ndidi. And I think we're gonna have to see another quick switch out because this Pelipper gonna come back in, threaten that Weather Bell once again. For sure, yeah. And then you could just switch back in your Coridon to bring that sun back to make it so that you don't really have any threats to worry about. That indeed, funnily enough, was basically the last threat on the field for this Coridon. Um, unless Pelipper, um, let's see what Pelipper is running. It's gonna have Hurricane, which would be a pretty good threat against the uh, fighting type of and the Rhydon. And the Rillaboom, both. But without that rain being up when the Coridon comes back in, it's gonna be a lot riskier, a lot less accurate at the very least. So switching out the Rotom to bring back the Coridon potentially, or maybe even bring out the Rillaboom. No, it's gonna go for the Coridon, get rid of that rain, and you're not gonna be able to get the rain back after this. I, even, I really respect that, because even if you do lose your Coridon here, at the very least, you would have no more rain to worry about. Yeah, the rain is washed away by the bright light of the sun, and now Hurricane comes forth. Does connect. Gonna do a lot of damage on the Coridon. Gonna go down, but now he still has three whole Pokemon to play with against against Lewis's two. And 
no more spores for that Amoongus. That is going to be an attack Amoongus all the way to the end. And now Rotom back on the field can manage to take it out as well. Yeah, it's going to be able to threaten that uh, Thunderbolt onto the times four weak Pelipper. It is going to have to protect here. No real other option. And that Amoongus as well, not too useful here. It's going to protect that taunt. Um, what this Rotom might have gone for. It's going to be on the Amoongus. Knock it out completely from full HP thanks to that sunlight set by Coridon, only possible with his support. <laughs> so now it's just the Pelipper against these two Pokemon. And this is what I love about Pokemon. This is what I love about general team building. Once again, this feels very much like what we saw with Diego's team. Whereas a lot of the teams we're seeing today are mostly just relying on a single Pokemon, usually the Calyrex Ice Rider, to really get everything done. This is a team where it's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of different things coming together. And you have to really base a lot of your strategy and a lot of your gameplay based off of what your opponent's doing, what your opponent's brought to the field. So it's a a lot less consistent in that regard but when it works and you know what you're doing and you have an idea of what plan you want to execute it's so much more rewarding not only um, on the literal sense where you will win a lot more decisively but as a player, as a spectator, it's a lot more interesting to watch as well. Exactly. When you're here in the thick of it, it comes down to your skill. This is a game of skill, of scam, of strategy, planning. Of course, there's some luck at hand. There's a lot that goes into team building as well, but you can just tell that there's just so much information and skill that you have to consider in these Pokemon battles. And especially some teams are easier to perform as others, like mm -hmm. this Calyrex team. There's a lot of moving parts there as well, but it's mainly just operating this one fine tool, this one perfected strike. But when someone knows how to counter out that strike, like we just saw with Rishi, things move a lot differently. You're put mm -hmm. on your back foot, you're off balance, and then it's just a little bit harder to perform from there. And here's how things I feel probably generally work through when it comes to a new format in any situation. Anytime the meta has changed for any game, you have your first initial strategy, and that's usually something that's really simple to execute. It's a simple game plan. You can't get something simpler than you have your sweeper and you just use a lot of redirects and switch and support to make sure it stays up. It's going to be able to wipe out most teams because everybody's still trying to figure things out. Maybe people are running things that are probably going to end up being weak to that or they don't exactly have a strategy. They're not aware of what you're going to be running. They're just That's... not used to operating the, the complex team that we may have built. Right? Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're operating a team that is just complex and a lot of moving parts, but it's not... It doesn't really have any uh, goal to work against. But now, things are slightly more figured out, far from being figured out. I feel like no matter what format it is, a Pokemon can never be <laughs> solved. But um, in any case, things are a lot more ironed out. We're seeing some more common strategies. And when you do build a more complicated team, you are able to actually engineer it to serve a specific purpose. And that's beating out the other common teams. So I feel like now we're, we're seeing the Golden Go come out with the Urshifu, with the Surging Strikes. But with that Sunlight, it's actually going to be doing reduced damage if it does go for the Surging Strikes. Yeah, this is interesting. A very interesting setup so far. A way different lineup, not expecting keeping potentially the Calyrex in the back seat here. Now threatening with this Urshifu is going to be pretty dangerous for Rishi. And here's a good opportunity now to correct the mistake I was making before. With the dark typing, you are immune to priority moves that are boosted by something like Prankster. So while Sucker Punch is a priority move, it wouldn't be blocked out by that dark type terrestrialization on the God of Hell. So it is probably just going to switch out to avoid any issues that it might run into there. But with that Protect coming out, we're going to have that Golden go nice and safe. It's just a Coridon now, and that Urshman is going to be able to act, but the U-turn is going to come out. Meant for the Gothitelle, but either way, happy to land it on the Rillaboom as well. It's going to do extra damage. It's going to be pivoting back in. Oh no. Caliper. But there's already so much fake out pressure here That's from that true. switch. And sure, he ate a U turn, but now it's going to go Pelipper. Pelipper, not going to be able to do all too much from the next turn. Or right on its own U turn onto the Golden Go. But. With the speeds, we're looking at here, 229. So Coridon will be able to go into Pelipper first. You could just U-turn uh, into Pelipper um, after maybe a fake out onto Golden Go. Um, 
there's a lot of options you can go here if you're Rishi. But ultimately, he's up there for a reason. I'm back here for a reason. I'm sure he's going to come up with something that's going to set himself up for as much success as he can. But it seems the Pelipper is just going to go for the Protect. Not really anything you want to try wide guarding. Golden Go. Protected last turn. It's going to be forced to take some kind of action here. It's going to go for the Shadow Ball into the Coridon slot. Maybe seeing if he can try to catch a pivot from the Gothitelle to come back in. We're going to have to wait and see. Fake out is going to come out. It's going to go onto the Pelipper instead of the Golden Go. Uh, and now, we're going to see the Coridon go for the U turn onto the Golden Go. We're going to switch out now. And I believe we're probably going to see either the Gothitelle or what else did Rishi bring? Can't really say for sure. It's going to be Rotom, Rotom once again, running with the same team as last time. No surprises left. Lewis here, having those the entire team. That Shadow Ball going to do a decent amount of damage, but not going to quite take out this Rotom. And here's the setup that I think Lewis or um, Rishi might be going for here. You turn with the Rillaboom, bring out the Crydon, turn the Weather Ball from Water exactly. type into a Fire type move once again. And both of these Pokemon will be totally fine taking a Fire type move. Crydon being a Dragon, Rot uh, Rotom, of course, being a Fire type. Exactly. He wants this sun up so badly, and he has a lot of options to do it. This Pelipper, now able to be U-turned on. It's looking relatively good for Rishi, but he still hasn't done all too much. I'd say Lou is still controlling the pace of the game so far, a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. But now, kind of making that read, he's going to get the Calibre Tap, which will threaten the Coridon. Dragon typing is going to be weak to the ice, but Coridon, it does have the Terrastalization into the Fire type, which no Terra has been committed yet. I don't think you'd be able to find much usage off of the Dark type on the Gothitelle this time around. And with the Sun coming out as well, Terra, um, ter with, hey, guess what? Golden Go doesn't have Follow Me. Wow. So you have two Fire types facing down. Um, a Steel type and an Ice type. Not looking too great. Rotom committing the Volt Switch is an interesting play. Bring out the Rillaboom, now you find Fake Out. Exactly, right. wow. This this is, the most, this is the most amount of swaps we've seen oh, so actually, far. He wants this Calyrex here. He wants it to stay, and he wants it to go down. So he's probably going to Terra into the Fire Typing on the Coridon, use Flare Blitz into the uh, Calyrex. If he protects, he protects. Golden Go is not going to really be able to threaten this Coridon. I say that, but I actually don't know if that's true. Um, it does have Make It Rain and Shadow Ball. It's a Steel type move. I think. It I think Rishi's in a very good spot right now. He's sitting uh, relatively in a nice spot. Gothitelle <sighs> has fake out though. Oh, yes, Gothitelle does so it's have not fake just out. Rillaboom. Gothitelle running fake out this as well. This Golden Go has so much pressure on it right now. And really, if he swaps to anybody else, it's not looking too great either. You gotta do something here. And Calyrus has no choice. <laughs> But to protect, really, facing down this sun set by Crydon. But he makes the read. He's going to go for the U-turn once again. Maybe bring out the Rillaboom. Threaten the fake out again. You're right. You do this forever. So, so much movement on this team. These fake outs are just like revolving or, doors. Even better, bring out the Rotom. This is your second fire um, type. You don't even have to commit the Terra this turn. You can just threaten it with solid. That's going to hurt, though. Oh, yes. But... Uh, she is holding on to a, uh, I think she's holding on to Focus Sash, either way. Oh no, Safety Goggles, but wasn't going to go down regardless. Uh, Calyrex is going to protect itself. But now it can't protect against the Overheat. Exactly. It's exposed completely. You protected your Terra, you protected your Coridon. You still have the Sun. There's no follow-up here, or there's no follow me here. This the is... only, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> And he can't switch. I was gonna say, at least you can just switch. But the Gothitelle, shadow tag, he's locked in. And he has protect. So Gothitelle's not going down this turn. I think wow. this is as comfortable as I can feel saying this is a guaranteed KO of the Calyrex. Golden Go does go first, though. It needs to knock out this Rotom. Yeah, okay, that is true. That is true, unless. Rotom... Although Gothitelle's being switched out. Okay. Just using the shadow tag as pressure. <laughs> Rotom. Switch, there's oh, the real boom. Now there's fake out pressure once again. Exactly. We're gonna see the Terra come out. Probably gonna be the water type onto. Oh, actually, no, it's gonna be onto the Golden Go. Oh, Recognizing Fairy. Uh, wind condition potentially. Fairy type Terra will be coming out. And, uh, we'll see what it's gonna go for here. Shadow Ball needs to land this. It needs to take this Rotom out. And it does crit. with a crit. I knew it was going to crit. I was like, you got to just hope for the crit. He finds it. But guess what? Oh, the Calyrex getting a boost as well. And no. the Glacial Lance. 
going forward is going to take out the real boom. Yeah, it is. Now it is going to get the boost. You have to get the KO yourself to get the boost. I thought you were saying he was going to get it off the Rotom, but that's two Pokemon down now. So that's a double boost, but it's really slow. Still no Trick Room up. Foul play is now going to be doing oh. a lot of damage with the fake out pressure as well. He's forced to protect. Plus, if he plays this right. He still has Terra. He can Terra the Coridon to be immune to the... Uh, like, we're not immune, but take a lot less resist. Yes. The only problem now is he can't set sun anymore. Um, Pelipper can just come in and get rid of that sun, exactly. which would be reducing the fire type damage and uh, change its move into a water ball, which would threaten the Coridon. Yeah, there's a lot of options here. It's not looking great for Rishi, but he still does have his restricted Pokemon in play. If he plays around this Coridon, he might be able to swing oh. the battle, but no, he's going to take the FF here. Yeah. As that was uh, two against pretty much four fully health Pokemon. It's just a little bit too hard of a battle to make. This is such a good team on both sides here. What I'm realizing with this setup is, this, like I said, we're at the point now in the re regulation where it's not like there's just one team that everyone's going to run. People have had enough exposure to the regulation now to build teams that don't necessarily counter those teams because then you become vulnerable to other types. You just build solid teams that have answers to those common threats, which is exactly what we're seeing here with these Coridons, which are th uh, threaten these uh, these Calyrex teams so well, and they force the Calyrex teams to, like, actually have to really make some tough choices sometimes instead of just going for the same follow me and glacial lance which is such a strong strategy yeah there's so much pressure on the side of rishi's team but it takes so much to make sure it works as you saw it was like a revolving door it had to mm -hmm. keep doing its cycles trying to force the perfect moment like i don't know if that crit mattered i'm not a mathematician here yeah. but if it did, I think that's where it all fell apart. If that Rotom could have gotten the overheat off on that Calyrex, I think Calyrex would have went down, or at least gotten low enough to be taken out. We would have seen the match be played out a little bit more. But overall, wow, what a match so far. Absolutely. And that's the other thing that's really scary with the uh, overheat is, again, I'm pretty sure it does have reduced accuracy. It might even just be by 5%, but it's enough that you're kind of worried every time you press it, every time you press it, you are thinking at the back of your mind, this can miss. Um, so even if you do get that overheat and you're going to be able to land that with all things considered against you, you're going to go first, you're going to have this going for you, you have the sun, you still have that chance to miss. And in Pokemon, 5% <laughs> when it comes to accuracy, is you feel it. You really, you remember actually, those five percent. Yeah, it, I, I don't. I'm pretty sure it genuinely is just five percent. But when it comes to Pokemon, like a ten percent, twenty percent, these feel like they're basically doubled the odds exactly. of missing. Um, but yeah, the overheat is such a very scary, threatening move. But it does have its limitations in some regards. Yeah, this Coridon team has so many moving parts. We didn't, we still haven't seen this Ting Lu yet. That is just hasn't the yeah. flutter made. I don't know if those are the best choices here, but because you kind of need the fake out pressure from all of those moving parts. But mm -hmm. we'll see if there's any switch ups going forward here. Once again, leading with the Pelipper. Gonna try and take things from here along with the Surishifu. Urshifu lead with Pelipper here, gonna get a boost to that water damage. So anything that stands is probably gonna really be feeling that damage that it's going to be doing. But of course, you still always have the option to switch, at least if you're Rishi. These two Pokemon are locked in place by the Shadow Tag from Gotham. Yeah, okay, locked in place. Now we're gonna see the swap out from the Gothitelle. Let's see, going out with the Coridon, cleansing the rain. This Surging Strikes is still gonna be putting a lot of pressure on Rishi. Getting rid of that water, or rather getting rid of that rain, so these Weather Balls now will be Fireballs instead. And that's gonna be the Pelipper. It's going to become a Ghost type. Now it's going to be immune to Fake Out, and uh, it's not gonna be double weak to that Thunderbolt from the Rotom. Very interesting pick, and the U-turn from the Urshifu getting the swap out. Doesn't like that matchup very much, even though the Surging Strikes would have surely have taken out this Rotom. I don't think it's very tanky here. Now we see the Kylerex being hovered here for the swap in, and being committed as well. And now this is the setup for both teams here. They have the wide guard, they have the sun up, 
is a very interesting thing. Like oh, Volt Switch actually out. went onto the other slot, wasn't targeted towards the uh, Pelipper. He must have known that if he's going to leave this Pelipper here, he's going to do something to protect it. He's going to bring the Gothitelle back out. He always wants to make sure he has at least one fire type threat in the back pocket. This Weather Ball, once again, is going to be a fire type move. It's going to go onto the Gothitelle. Huge special defense, so it's not going to hurt too much. Now, Ordinarily, I would be worried to have to face down the uh, Coridon in the sun with my Calyrex, but if he switched into this Calyrex, I feel like he probably did it because he's confident or he has some kind of strategy of how to handle the situation. He's going to go for the swap out with Golden Go. Um, I'm pretty sure with that Shadow Tag, I guess if Gothitelle ends up switching, it will be able to switch, but... Uh, if he doesn't, of course, then that would just be ending up, oh, this would just end up being a wasted turn. So a little bit of a gamble he's going to go for here, trying to get a switch out. But Gothitelle very well could just end up staying here. Uh, actually, wait, Shadow Tech didn't prevent the switch? I'm interested to see, it must be something I'm not aware of. Okay, oh, wow. so with Pelipper being a ghost type, it will become immune to Shadow Tag in that situation. Karidon will protect itself, so will Calyrex, uh, but Gothitelle still has the ability to act here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this on. Yes, but it's going to go into the Calyrex to prevent that trick room. That's going to be another situation where you really just, it, it goes to show, Trick Room really is the success point for this team. Glacial Lance is a solid move, it's very strong, it's very threatening, but if you're not acting first, it, it's not that scary. So always trying to get that taunt off on the Calyrex. But once again, it's just going to press that Glacial Lens button since there's not much else for it to do. Whether or not we see the Terra come out for um, Rishi, we're going to have to wait and see. But another switch out. Golden Go, also a ghost type, is going to be immune to that. It's going to bring back out the Pelipper, get the rain back. Ghost types, we love them. Wow, yeah, <laughs> this ghost type Terra is absolutely imperative. Just completely ruining Rishi's game plan here. Now a Terra on the enemy team. Let's see how this one is going to shake up. Terra Dark, it worked in game foul one. Play. Will it work in game two? Oh, the foul play pressure as well. It's going to be huge. Yeah, I think this knocks out the Calyrex here. It's going to be last to go, of course. You could also take out the Pelipper. Uh, oh, that is either, true. Either opponent here is an amazing one to foul play here. But the foul play is going to go on to somebody here. It's already set in stone. We're just going to have to wait and see which he ended up choosing. Grassisters is going to come up too. This will be a little extra boon for this team on Rishi's side. But foul play is going to come out and it's going to connect. The Calyrex. The Calyrex. That's going to be the knocked out restricted. Such a very powerful call out. A great move as well. Being able to force out. Because that was the only Pokemon that wasn't able to switch. So if you're going to go for anything, you want to go for the most guaranteed safe play. Where you know no switches are going to come out. And just go for yeah, the Calyrex, and of course, it's also probably one of the bigger threats, but Golden Go coming back and showing this is now probably the second biggest threat, or the biggest threat in this game now that Calyrex is out. Um, and with this rain up, Pelipper in contention for that title as well. But we could see Coridon come back at any point here. Got to tell, might want to stick as long as I possible. I think you want to ignore the Pelipper. You don't want that one in the back pocket for now. It, if it gets swapped out, well, that's it then. But you just want to wait as long as possible before you switch your Coridon, because you don't want that to end on water. Pelipper is going to protect himself. Another turn of stalling things out, but that means if it doesn't go for anything else here, then it's going to be it's going to be forced to act. It's going to be exposed the next turn. Pelipper is going to block out that grassy surge. Nasty block coming up. Nasty go. But it could be another target for foul play, especially It's weak now. to it. Yeah, but it's going to target wow. instead. Another Big protect. Play. Huge protect. A great reads coming out, but at the very least, it is exposed for the next turn. Golden Go is very fast. Um, Gothitelle probably won't have the time to reach it before uh, it can, you know, get that foul play off instead. We're going to see the Pelipper switch out. Does not want to take any damage. It also wants to have that rain reset in his back pocket. Urchifu coming out in the rain as well. It's going to be able to make as much use of that as possible. Wow. It's going to protect. So it's going to be immune to anything that this Golden Go might have tried to go for. And Rillaboom is going to grassy glide into the Urshifu. Wow, That's super huge, effective. Huge damage. Golden Go is going to use Make It Rain, but it's going to get protected out by the Gothitelle.
Um, Doesn't and hit the reel of boom, and wow, that special attack boost just did so much damage. Yeah, it's going to lose that special attack boost as a result, however, but it's still going to be a huge boon. Urshifu took a huge amount of damage. Honestly, I feel like Rillaboom did its job because now you can bring back in your Karaidon, reset the rate or the sun, um, and you're going to have to worry about Pelipper once again. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see this U-turn once more bring back out the Rotom. You definitely could do that, but you definitely need to take out this Golden Goat. It is an absolute truck right now. It's just a pretty much a glass cannon, but there's two points of pressure here. The Karaidon could do Flare Blitz, could do a lot of stuff that's good against this Steel type. So could the Rotom, and so could this Gothel. All three Pokemon pressuring this Golden Go. So really, you're just trying to make sure you can maybe switch out this Karaidon and still taking him out. We're gonna see the commit of this turn coming out. That communicating symbol, please hurry up. I can't wait to see how this next turn unfolds. I feel like this is gonna be the pivotal one that really decides the outcome of this game. That sunlight being up, but the Pelipper, and oh, actually no, Urshifu can't switch out because it's not a ghost type and Gothitelle is still on the field. So Golden Go is gonna be free to uh, come out, but Pelipper will be making its return. This uh, Urshifu is most likely gonna go down, um, but it's not gonna go down without a fight. It's gonna use those surgery strikes onto the Gothitelle, and I think this is gonna be, be a knockout. knockout. Yeah, Gothitelle has really high defense, but it's been reduced. It even healed up a couple of times, but still not enough to really establish it. And with that Gothitelle going down, this means that you can't switch out your uh, Karaidon anymore. So even if it did go for U-turn, it's gonna have to stick in, and it's not gonna be able to reset the rain. This is a Pelipper. Flare Blitz! It's gonna come out onto the Pelipper. It's gonna oh, be reduced no, because rain. of the rain. And it's gonna do a little bit of damage to itself as well. Again, the rain is such a huge part of the success of Luz's team right now have to just be able to deal with it at this point. Weather Ball is not going to be boosted by Stab anymore since this Pelipper is a ghost type now, but... I don't even know if it matters at this point. The rain is just so Hurricane effective. Two. Surging Strikes to go through any Protect you want and to go for. And the speed to boot. Things exactly. are looking dire for Rishi. There it is, taking out the Rotom in a mere two strikes. So Trisperi does get eaten. True. Might have... Might be able to take all three here. But it will still go down, unfortunately. Oh, it could take three. Rate. It could take three. Yeah, that's the impressive feat. It was able to take three of those hits. But it's going to fall regardless. Lewis bringing this back. Very strong plays coming up from both players. But I really do believe that with that final turn coming out, Rishi is going to be able to take this one out. Collision course is going to go onto the Urshifu. But that's just going to bring back out the Golden Go. And uh, that's another play, another turn done. But the hurricane will end things here. Yeah. All said and done. Reach, or, uh, Lewis is going to come out on top. And that is a fantastic game played. So many ups and downs. We got to finally see the Karaidon versus the Calyrex <laughs> matchup. And it basically went as interesting as I was expecting and hoping it to. It really comes down to so many different factors. It's just. You gotta play Pokemon. Sometimes exactly. you win, sometimes you lose. And that went all the way to game three. Both teams very, very strong, but that mm -hmm. Ice Rider just is very consistent. And at the end of the day, let's be honest, it wasn't Ice Rider that won that matchup. It was Golden Go and the Pelipper. Mm, basically, yeah, that was <laughs> very interesting enough. That wasn't even, this felt the least like Restriction G or <laughs> that we've seen, Regulation G, because of the fact that, yeah, we didn't really get to see Ice Rider do too much. And even Karaidon, it hit like once or twice. It, both of these Pokemon just kind of acting as supports for their team. Well, Karaidon offering a lot more support because of that sun, able to change the weather, change so many dynamics of that match. But um, Calyrex, guess you could say supporting that team, but just by acting as such a huge threat. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of the Karaidon switching out with mm -hmm. the fake out pressure, but I think if you're going to have it in that more support entity area, <laughs> oriented to play style, then maybe you even just give it helping hand at that point, because we Flare Blitz really didn't see all too much usage. It could, potentially, but Collision Course, also good, but I don't know. Well, there goes one Pokemon. There goes uh, Quaxly. Quaxly. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get him after the break. Maybe but that's nonetheless, but, yeah, wow. like great, you said. Great plays all around.
incredible match. Um, but going to the grand finals, this might surprise you to hear, but Diego actually lost his match to oh. Kazuki. We're going to have a grand finals where we're going to be seeing Lewis go up against Kazuki, and we're going to have a very interesting grand finals indeed. We're going to see who's going to come out on top and walk away with those points. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, everybody here is a winner, especially us and especially you <laughs> for getting to witness all of this Pokemon action. But we're one game away from taking things to a close, so don't go anywhere. I don't think you'd want to miss the conclusion. We'll see you guys very soon.